we've got the general aviation community, and the, which includes you guys, and the industrial park. So there's the two things. How do we mix those together? Uh, construction probably, hopefully, in December of this year. And we have to have it all complete because uh, the money runs out or expires on June 30th of 2025. So we're in a time crunch to get started and get it done. Um, the, one of the reasons why we want to do that is, um, is to start air cargo operations this way is the, in order to have a justification for a second runway, um, you have to have air cargo operations. You have to have large airplanes landing. Well, it's a little tough with a, you don't have any airplanes of that size landing and, or you can't let them land here at this point. So that's why we're developing the runway the way we are. And once we get 500 operations of large air cargo operations, then we'll have justification for the um, what we call the crosswind runway until um, we had some meetings with the governor and the economic development people at the state and they uh, were meeting with uh, representatives from companies in Taiwan and they wanted to fly elect electronics straight into here. For that, we'll need the 747. And so this, the, our crosswind runway, which was going to be 6,400 feet, now became 12,000 feet long and 150 feet wide and stressed for 747. With the air cargo handling facilities and stuff on the northwest side. That's the plan. Long range plan. But to do all of that, we need some more money. So, um, in, in, starting in 2009, uh, Chris Lyons um, and company got together and decided that they would like to put in some uh, warehouses on the triangles on the north side, northeast side of the airport road. But uh, in order to do that, we had to transfer some land from the airport to the, the company. And so, as I said, we've been start working on that since 2009. Hopefully within two weeks we'll get that done. It's been a long, arduous process, <coughs> but we're gonna get it done. And then Franklin Mountain Management, uh, Paul Foster's development company, is going to build two warehouses about the same size as the two that they built here, and they'll be the same tenant in all four warehouses. And they supply the electronics for uh, Foxconn. So once we get that done. Um, Franklin Mountain then has said that they would like to put an industrial park on the airport. So once we get that land transferred to them, they can get that done. They will be transferring some land to us to make it the square here. So this will all be airport property here, here, and there. We have 1,117 acres. And as I mentioned, one of the ways we get money is land leases. So their plan is to build um, a total of 11 warehouses, most of them on airport property. First two will not be because the, the land will be transferred uh, directly to them and, <coughs> and sold to them by Chris Lyons. <coughs> but the rest of it will remain airport property and they're gonna put in the infrastructure and build the warehouses They've got um, those here and these two here. These are the warehouses they've got now. Um, so that, uh, once we get all of that done and they lease all of that land, 
Um, that would be about $1.2 million of uh, revenue a year for the airport. And Burrell's operation, their land uh, will be some roughly around 380000 a year. So my revenues will go up a little bit. <laughs> um, one other uh, business deal that I've worked on, been working on, and uh, we got uh, almost complete now is um, a solar farm, or solar array. We've got the, the this land here still belongs to the airport. Um, nobody's wanted it back. It came to us by uh, land grant from the uh, uh, BLM, and they don't want it back, so uh, we're figured. Well, we'll see what we can do with it. So the we're working with um, Saturn Power, which is a build. They build uh, solar arrays, a lot of them on airports, and they're going to take about 40 acres in this area right here. Which means we still have some more land left there. Um, we've done a had a grant to do a study for different things that could be done in the county and one of the things they looked at was the airport and one of the things they they came up with was for that was that would be a good area for a um, the self-driving autonomous uh, trucks a test track for them. so if we can get that in there then that will take that land if we get um, this run runway built then we've got this land in the middle. Uh, hopefully, they will, the BLM will give that to us too, and then we can develop that even further. So. A couple other ideas that I've had that um, I would like to do. One of them is putting in a terminal building so I can move my office out of the one room we've got in the fire station and actually have a airport terminal that we can have um, a restaurant in it, uh, retail facilities, meeting rooms, office space to rent out. Uh, you'd be surprised how many calls I get every year for people wanting to rent uh, offices of the airport. So hopefully we can do that. All I need is another eight, six to eight million dollars for that. <laughs> Um, one other thing I would like to put in is in this area here, which is just to the this side of Franklin Mountain, or not Franklin Mountain, uh, Francis Aviation, is the flight school. Flight school and uh, A&P school combined with the ramp uh, here, so they've got good access. They don't have, we don't have to have people driving in between their airplanes and their hangar. And, it's not a, exactly a safe, uh, safest operation for with students, so I would like to do that. It's a plan I've got with long range. It's the Red Arrow that go there, or a university program? Um, well, I've been talking with both uh, Heather Wilson and uh, uh, Tomas, and Tomas has been talking with Heather Wilson, and he would like to do that in conjunction with. Um, UTEP. Only problem is, is uh, UTEP uh, is in Texas and supported by the Texas uh, legislature, and they don't want to spend money in New Mexico. They would just as soon spend it in. Uh, I would think NMSU might be interested. Um, I haven't been able to get anybody to talk to me at NMSU. Uh, DACC, I have. I've been talking with uh, Monica, um, uh, president of D, uh, the community college, mm -hmm. and she is interested in it. So we may partner partner with them. Um, also, I've been talking with the uh, the Hunts, and they were, would like to uh, participate in that. And they have some contacts with Delta Delta Airlines. 
So if we can get a partnership with Delta uh, Hunts and Community College, I think we can get it done. 94 people on waiting list for team hangers. So they are uh, our next project, and the starting to marshal the um, equipment to do it now. We're going to grade an area for seven new tea hangers with an area for probably seven to eight more, um, and that will start uh, the grading. Will actually start probably in a week or so, and that's on here. There will be three south of the uh, green uh, JT hangar, or 13, and uh, four with the taxiway out to the, in a 90 degree turn and go out to the um, run up area. And I've got um, working on developing the lease contracts for the T hangers, and there's a individual that's going to build all seven of them and there's another no he's going to build six and there's another randy boggs is going to build uh four um kind of boxy tea hangers they'll kind of look more like tea hangers but they'll be uh large enough for citation or something like that uh, twins that's a about a three and a half million dollar project that uh, 2.25 million of it came from a earmark from Senator Heimrich. So, yes. What kind of rent are you charging on tea hangers now? Um, now it's 160 a month, and um, it hasn't been raised in 15 years probably. So I'm gonna probably raise it at know, maybe 10, 15 dollars a month again. <clears throat> Increase the revenue a little bit around here. So. Um, the we make money by four different ways at the airport. First one is by land leases. Second one is um, fuel sales. Third one is uh, rent. And the fourth one is uh, two percent of the businesses, the gross receipts of the businesses that operate here. We give them a break on their land rent and get an additional 2% of their gross receipts for operations. That brings in about 400000 a year. Um, the next thing we're going to do, oh, also <laughs> in that, um, we've got Delta, um, Taxiway, it's uh, on the other side of the Francis Aviation, and we're going to extend that, and then make a 90 degree turn and go through the Amigo Airshow parking lot, that big area over there, and then we've got room for 34 more corporate hangars, and we'll put in the infrastructure for that. Um, we've got uh, some of the um, bipartisan infrastructure law money coming in and we uh, did not use it the first year. It's 293,000 a year. And so that's, uh, yeah, 293,000 a year. That uh, we can save and we have to spend it in five years. So that will take more, give us some of that um, taxiway and the infrastructure for that. Um, also, there will be a road just inside the hangar that will go on the other side so we don't have to drive down the uh, taxiway. I haven't figured out how I'm going to keep get cars off of the taxiways around here, but uh, I don't think I can do that. So, anyway, that covers the pretty much the general aviation side of it. Um, yeah. Yes? Will that taxiway delta cross to the runway? No. So you're not going to put that one back in? Um, I'll get to that. Okay. Yes, there will be a taxiway, but you will not be able to go straight. Oh, that's fine. So, um, the 
The next area is um, air cargo operations. I've been working on that for to, uh, to support the industrial parks. The um, they're trying to develop this into what they call a inland port. Uh, we don't have uh, water, so it, we've got a lot of sand, but no water. So we'll. Um, We've got uh, truck traffic, we've got um, rail traffic, and now we're going to have uh, air cargo operations. Uh, the one company that um, is, has leased 45 acres, or 40 acres, no, 45 acres, in this area here, which is um, west of the Francis. That's Burrell Aviation. Um, we're just, a, we've got everything approved. We're about to sign the, re uh, the lease for it. And it's been approved by the State Board of Finance, so we're ready to go. <clears throat> they will have three years in which to build their building. They've got buildings. They're gonna put in a um, distribution warehouse a cold storage warehouse and an air cargo handling facility. I don't know whether it's going to be three separate buildings or all in one, but there'll be three separate areas in it. And they're also going to build at least one um, large uh, maintenance hangar for large aircraft. Their initial, um, we were completing a air cargo study and our, um, where am I? the presentation on that to the Board of uh, County Commissioners is gonna be on the 14th of March. Um, it's on, either online or you can come and see it in person if you would like, or you can wait for the uh, brochures to come out. So we did, I did have some brochures, we had some brochures that talked about the need for the air cargo operations and they've got, uh, Burrell has got um, four different uh, destinations with different types of cargo in mind that they're developing. Uh, one of them goes all the way up to Anchorage, Alaska. And the primary aircraft for air cargo operations in the business is, seems to be the 757. Um, so we're trying to develop the runway and the infrastructure so to handle the 757. Now it's not going to interrupt much of the uh, general aviation traffic because there'll probably be an average of uh, two to three operations a day. So that uh, won't interrupt many uh, touch and goes. That's down here. In order to, our part of the, or the county's part of that and the airport's part is to widen the runway. We're gonna, so we're gonna put 25 feet on each side and it's not gonna be lengthened because of the railroad on one end and the escarpment on the other. So we won't, uh, we don't have additional length, but it will be um, uh, probably another four, raise it four inches probably. The reason why we, we were originally planning to put 25 feet uh, or 50 feet on one side, on the north side, but if we do that, then we run into a problem with a offset crown <coughs> on the runway. We have to change the instrument approaches, approach, and we also have to change the, uh, <coughs> um, on the grading, there's a ditch on the north side for retention and water retention and we would have to move that so uh, that would run into a, a huge problem so we're going to put 25 feet on each side and <coughs> we're going to put a backup generator so we have um, electrical power in case of emergencies for the runway lights it won't cover any of the buildings on the airport but it will be uh, We will have lights at all times. Um,
the um, with the larger aircraft and the speeds that they will fly. Um, we're going to change the exit taxiways. There'll be one at each end, and we're basically we're going to divide it in fourths. So there'll be one at each end, one in the middle, and then two in, in either side. So there'll be five. So there'll be one. This one will come out, um, sort of. Uh, we're going to decrease the length or the width of it so it's not used by aircraft, but it will be access for emergency vehicles. The other one will be in here, one in the middle, one in here, it's near where Delta is, and then uh, the end. And the um, geometry for those will be for a 757 aircraft. We started looking at it. We were going to do it for a 737 um, aircraft, uh, 800, which they use a lot for air cargo operations. But with the gear configuration of the 757, it does not require additional strength of the runway. But it does require a larger turning radius to get on and off run the uh, runway. So there we, we're going to have to do change the geom or increase the geometry. It's not going to cost us a whole lot extra because we hadn't done the actual design work on it yet. So we're doing that now. We've got $20 million to uh, do this project and um, it's going to take all of it, I think, to get it all done. But uh, we should start um, from, that's the Airport Advisory Board. Uh, one is been a member of that for a while, was a member for, for a long time. One other thing, is, is there any chance that you could put a gate in between, uh, you know, between the airport and here so we don't have to use the automatic gate for you know, people, just personnel? Um, just access to where the museum is so we don't, you know, we can get over here? I mean, without having a car, if you come in here with an airplane, you're kind of, you're kind of stuck if you're on foot. Yeah. Um, that thought has occurred to me, but as I said, I'd like to build a, a terminal and move out of here so this would strictly be fire station. Okay. So, uh, but who knows when that's going to happen, so that's an idea that won't cost a whole lot of money to get that done. Well, our museum's fairly well locked up, you know, I mean, uh, they, they've got, they're, they're secure. Mm -hmm. If it's just a way for people to come in and fly in here, could get in here to come over here I mean, this is a terrific meeting room yes it is but we can't get here from air from ga mm -hmm. so, you know just thought it's a thought it just seemed like i was surprised i thought there was a gate yeah that, that has occurred to me too a number of times and especially when i'm over there and need to run back over here to get something and go back but uh, um, i haven't done that yet maybe that's another project i can give to jody Getting back to the meeting, Andy or, or, or I try to make the meeting, but sometimes our schedule's not always, yeah. uh, always there. Um, Andy here is also with the AOPA, as you can continue a on. ASN, just an airport safety network, and mm -hmm. you know, just come to the airport, just attend meetings and kind of just uh, see what's going on, it's just kind of like you did here. So uh, I think Tomas was the representative before, and uh, but uh, I went ahead and I, I, I took that, so I'll be I'll be here at your meetings when okay. I can. So I send out the uh, announcement for the meeting and the agenda to all all the tenants that I have emails for. 